Hello, and welcome to my ASME AIA Symposium Talk. My name is Erica DeLuca, and I am an undergraduate student of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering at Oklahoma State University. Today I will be talking about Reynolds number dependency on metacronal swimming performance. For some background on current autonomous underwater vehicles, or AUVs, is that they have three main downfalls. First, the cost of producing an AUV is very large. To produce one AUV, it costs roughly a million dollars or more. Additionally, for these AUVs, their size is very large, running in lengths of 19 to 21 feet long. Because of this large size, when they're in the field, their maneuverability and mobility is very limited. Our research hopes by decreasing size, we can decrease the cost and increase maneuverability. Additionally, by decreasing cost and increasing maneuverability, we hope to allow for the deployment of swarms of AUVs, which is a common swimming technique that current aquatic animals, such as krill and shrimp, already perform. However, by decreasing the size of AUVs, we increase the fluid dynamic forces, which increases the drag coefficient that acts on AUVs, which decreases the maneuverability. Also, current research found that propeller propulsion, as depicted in the image, is not beneficial at small scales. However, it is noted that current oceanic creatures and aquatic creatures, such as krill and copepod, on a centimeter scale, perform what is called metachronal motion to swim. We analyzed the metachronal motion swimming of freshwater shrimp, as you can see in this video. We took recordings such as this of live shrimp and analyzed their swimming patterns. First, we looked at the limb angle with comparison to the body, which is called alpha for the whole swimming motion. We also looked at the distance of the, between the limbs for P1 to P5 as labeled here and found that the distance between the limbs is uniform also, as presented in the graph below, alpha angles for pleopods versus time. You can see that we have recorded two complete cycles for each limb of a swimming technique. And you can see that for one cycle, which is from a low to high to low alpha, you can see that there is what's called a power stroke. A power stroke is when the limbs or pleopods go from forward facing to backward facing in order to increase spinning speed, which is also from a low alpha to a high alpha, and recovery stroke is when the pleopods return from facing backwards to forwards as an energy efficient way to return back to power stroke, which is a high alpha to a low alpha. Also, as you can see in the image, the limbs do not move uniformly and are unsynchronized. An example of synchronized motion that we are commonly seeing is on rowing teams when the paddles are uniformly going together. This is different than what krill and other oceanic creatures and aquatic creatures perform. Also, you can see that there is a sequence of back to front motion. Starting at pleopod 5, it begins the motion and then is followed by pleopod 4 and so on. Additionally, as you can see in the graph, for each individual pleopod, before it starts its recovery stroke or power stroke, there is an offset between them, so they do not start and finish at the exact same time. We took this data and looked at the Reynolds number of a pleopod and the Reynolds number of the body. For the Reynolds number of a pleopod, it is two times the stroke amplitude, which stroke amplitude is a high alpha minus a low alpha, of a cycle in radians times stroke frequency, which is the duration of one cycle from low alpha to high alpha to low alpha, and that is one over the duration to get the frequency in seconds times the pleopod length squared all over the kinematic viscosity of water. For Reynolds number, we looked at the swimming speed times the body length of the organism divided by the kinematic viscosity of water. We predominantly focused on ghost shrimp in our studies and compared it to data that was already collected on copepods and mantis shrimp. In this group of three, copepods are the smallest being, which then followed by ghost shrimp, and mantis shrimp are the largest. 
you can see that for the smallest, the Reynolds number of body and the Reynolds number of the pleopod are on magnitudes of 10. For the ghost shrimp, it is on Reynolds number of body and pleopod on magnitudes of 100, and for mantis shrimp, it is on magnitudes of 1,000. This leads us to the question of how does swimming performance vary with Reynolds number? In order to test this, we took data collected from the live shrimp that we recorded and implemented it into a self-propelling robot. The self-propelling robot is attached to an air bearing, which limits the amount of friction that it is feeling and affected when it is swimming. Additionally, we changed stroke frequency independently by holding kinematic viscosity constant and we changed kinematic viscosity independently by holding stroke frequency constant. For the kinematic viscosity, we changed the percent of water to glycerin mixtures that the robot swam in. Our findings found that when holding stroke frequency constant and changing kinematic viscosity, as presented in this graph, when you hold frequency constant, you see that body swimming speed is not majorly affected, it's minimally affected for different kinematic viscosities, and that is across the board when you increase. However, when you hold kinematic viscosity constant and change stroke frequency, you can see that swimming speed increases across the board for all three kinematic viscosities. This determines that swimming speed depends more heavily on stroke frequency and is minimally affected by kinematic viscosity. Again, frequency is one duration of a cycle, which is a power and recovery stroke is one cycle. Also, we looked at the effects of changing Reynolds number on advance ratio. We found that Reynolds number has little effect on advance ratio, which advance ratio is the body speed with respect to the limb speed. And for a low advance, lower advance ratio, the legs have to move faster to achieve the same body speed as compared to a higher advance ratio. As you can see, regardless of Reynolds number and size increase, advance ratio stays about the same across the board. One problem that we are also worried about when you decrease the size or increase the size of a model is drag coefficient. However, for Struhall's number, we used flow visualization and we characterized Struhall's number using the equation shown below. We, the Struhall's number informed us of the effectiveness of momentum transfer, transfer from the legs to the wake. We found that Struhall number was essentially unchanged across the Reynolds number of 50 to 50,000. This suggests that momentum transfer to the fluid is not affected by changing size and or velocity scale of the metachronal paddle system by four orders of magnitude. Therefore, when you change the size of a model, Struhall number remains constant, therefore drag coefficient is neglectable with its changes and effects on the model. In summary, we observe metachronal paddling across several magnitudes, several orders of magnitude. We found that for a given kinematic viscosity, increasing frequency increases swimming speed. And for a given frequency, kinematic viscosity has minimal effect on swimming speed. Results suggest that metachronal paddling is scalable to Reynolds number of 10,000 magnitudes. Therefore, this allows us to decrease the size of AUVs because the effect of Reynolds number does not drastically change the effects on the body as long as we keep metachronal paddling and increase frequency and keep kinematics viscosity constant. Thank you for coming to my talk.